Okay, so as I said, these are all the things that, well, this is like 95% of what you need to know on this topic, but now I will talk about it in more detail. Okay, any questions? All right, well, let's start with this fact, which you may already know, that if p is a prime, then the integers mod p make a field. But let's think for a moment about why that's true. Uh, I mean, the thing you need to check is that the integers mod p are closed under these operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. For the first three, you know, and that they follow the normal rules of arithmetic and so forth, the first three are fine. The, the main interesting part is why, are the why is the integers mod p closed under division? So let's ask this question for p a prime. Why is this set, the integers mod p, a field. OK, and the, the thing we need to answer is, you know, how come you can do uh, a divided by b mod p? And really, you only under, need to understand how can you do 1 divided by b mod p. Like, you need to understand, like, what is the reciprocal of b? Because if you have that, then you can get a divided by b by multiplying a by the reciprocal. So uh, the main question here is, um, you know, the answer is because, uh, you know, any b, which is not equal to 0 mod p, has a reciprocal. Okay, and that means it's some number mod p such that b times b inverse is 1. Now, uh, that's all well and good, but if you actually want to like, do the arithmetic, like you're like, OK, I will now like, work with this finite field of size p, and you've got some number b, you're like, now I need to know what is uh, the reciprocal of b. Uh, so does anybody know how you find the reciprocal of b? Yes? Fermat's little theorem. Fermat's little theorem. Mm, yes, you can do it with Fermat's little theorem. Wasn't what I was thinking. Do you know, know another way? Uh, Euclid's algorithm. Yes, that's right. Uh, that's what I was going for. Um, so uh, given such b, you can find it efficiently. OK, in, so efficiently means poly log p time. Right? Because like uh, the numbers mod p are numbers that you can write down with like log p bits. So poly log p means efficient using uh, like Euclid's algorithm or the extended GCD algorithm. And let me just remind you what that is. Uh, what is the extended GCD algorithm? If you're given two numbers, let's say given any two numbers b and p uh, integers, well, they can be any old numbers, but I've called them b and p for reasons you'll see in a second. Um, what does this algorithm do? Not only does it compute the GCD of b and p, but it also finds additional information. It finds like an integer linear combination of them that adds up to the GCD. So I'll write that. Uh, it finds some integers c and d. And these are like smaller than uh, basically b and p max of b and p, uh, such that you know, c times b plus d times p equals the GCD of b and p. OK, so it finds the GCD, and it also finds uh, c and d. And this is very nice when p is a prime. So if p is prime, then this GCD between b and p is 1. Uh, because we're assuming b is not 0. It's not a multiple of p. And so now, once this, you have this, uh, what is b inverse, or reciprocal of b? Yeah, it's c. So this is b reciprocal mod p, because this is a multiple of p, so you could ignore it mod p. And now it's saying that this number times b is 1 mod p. OK. so. C is the reciprocal you're looking for. 
OK, and because of this, um, you know, computation in SP is efficient. You, know, you can you know, add and multiply these log p bit numbers and polylog p time and reduce the mod p and so forth. And this is the main additional thing you need. Uh, actually, let me make a couple of additional comments here. Uh, this is efficient in like the classical sense as polynomial time, but actually a very interesting open question is whether this has a highly efficient parallel algorithm. So this is actually a sort of famous open problem in computer science theory. Um, can you compute the GCD of two numbers uh, in the complexity class NC, which remember is like a polylog parallel time, or you know, uniform circuits with polylog depth and polynomial size. So this is open. And um, you know, it's a little bit of a sadness about the, the complexity of arithmetic that we don't know. Uh, so that's one uh, observation. And also, if you think about this a little bit longer, you can see why if you take the integers mod m, where m is not a prime, it's not a field. And it's because um, the numbers that make a GCD with m that's not uh, 1 will be zero divisors. They won't have a reciprocal uh, mod m. OK, any questions about this? There is actually one catch if, you know, of this discussion where I try to tell you that, OK, you know, uh, com working with this field uh, of prime size, you can do it efficiently. And this catch is like, well, how do you actually get the prime? So uh, one thing you're often doing in uh, computer science theory applications is um, working with fields that are sort of exponentially large, like if you're doing an algorithm where the parameter is n, you often want a field that's of size exponentially large in n, which is fine. I mean, it'll be write downable with n bits. And uh, sometimes you don't really care that much about the exact size of the field. You just need it to be sort of big enough. And so a field of size, you know, something like exponential in n is, is fine for you. Don't, you don't care the exact size. Um, but if these are the only fields you know about, the fields of size uh, equal to a prime, then that means in order to do this, you need to find a prime number of size you know, exponential in n. Or you need to find a prime number with n bits. And that's actually an interesting question. How do you get, uh, given n, how do you try to efficiently get an n bit prime number? Okay, so you know, maybe you don't care exactly how big this the thing is. You just want it to be, let's say, n bits long, so it's you know, between two to the n and two to the n plus one. But how can we get such a prime efficiently? Does anybody know the uh, the algorithm for this? Uh, yeah. Well, I had a question. Actually. Oh, okay, sure. Um, Oh, yeah, we'll get to that. So actually, in many applications, you're like, oh, it's actually going to be more convenient for me to just fix 2, that's p, which I know is a prime, and uh, work with this field of size like 2 to the l for a convenient choice of l. But, um, well, they're like a little bit more complicated, these fields. I mean, it's not so easy to just immediately say, oh, it's the integers mod p. Like, it's not just the integers mod p to the l. So, uh, yeah. But usually, you probably would do that in practice. But I'm bringing this up because it's also like kind of a fun question. Sometimes you want primes of n, n around n bits uh, for non-field related purposes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly right. So when I first learned this, I was like so disappointed with computer science, like I was really mad. But this is how you do it: you just pick a random number, and you're like, I hope it's prime, and then you test that, and if it's not, you pick another one. So this is the algorithm, and it's like the best algorithm, sort of the only efficient algorithm known, really. So just repeat, just pick a random n-bit number. And then check if it's prime. And as we've mentioned a few times, um, this last step you can do with either uh, this deterministic algorithm of Agarwal, Kyle, and Saxena from O2, which runs in like O tilde n to the sixth time, 
Or since you're already using randomness, you can use um, uh, like the Miller-Rabin algorithm, which is basically quadratic time, but it's a randomized algorithm for primality testing. And uh, it's a surprising and interesting fact that there's no known deterministic algorithm for solving this problem efficiently. And you might just think, I mean, if you're a little bit confused, you might just think like, well, I mean, why don't I just test if 2 to the n is prime, and then if, well, it's a multiple of 2. So 2 to the n plus 1 is prime, 2 to the n is plus 3 is prime, 2 to the n plus 5 is prime, and keep going until I hit a prime. Uh, unfortunately, we don't provably know that that will quickly lead you to a prime. Actually, there's a conjecture in number theory called Cromer's conjecture, which is pretty well believed by the number theorists, from what I understand. And uh, it implies that if you do this algorithm, try 2 to the n, 2 to the n plus 1, 2 to the n plus 2, 2 to the n plus 3, and so forth, you'll get to a prime always before you get to 2 to the n plus order n squared. And therefore, if you believe Kramer's conjecture, then it's fine. You can do this algorithm. Just start at 2 to the n and keep going up, checking for primality. And after you know, n squared many or so many tries, you'll find a prime. But that uh, conjecture is unproven. And the best proven fact is that if you go up to 2 to the n plus 2 to the 0.535n, uh, then you'll get a prime. But this will take you, you know, exponential and n many tries. So we don't have that. Um, but uh, this algorithm works fine. And uh, to understand that, you need to know the fact that the primes are not too rare among all n bit numbers. But I know you know this because you had like a homework problem about it uh, concerning the prime number theorem, which basically says uh, the fraction of n-bit numbers which are prime is big omega of 1 over n. Uh, so actually, more precisely, if you really want the details, as you might remember from that homework, there's this famous prime number theorem, which is proven. And it says the following, and is very nearly equivalent to the following, the fraction of uh, n-bit numbers that are prime is like uh, 1 over 2 ln 2 times n. OK, and I think on your homework you showed that it's at least like uh, 1 over 2n. But anyway, I mean, in turn, this implies that like after order n trials, you'll find a prime with high probability. Um, this is a comment that has nothing to do with fields and polynomials, but you'll often see this phrase, WHP, just means with high probability. Um, OK, good. And actually, for some applications for which you'd like a large prime, for example, cryptography, you actually often want a large random prime. So actually, sometimes you're like perfectly fine and even happy that your algorithm works by like picking a random number until it finds a prime. But if you just want any old prime, which sometimes is all you want, uh, this is still the only efficient provably efficient deterministic algorithm, sorry, provably efficient algorithm we know. We don't know a provably efficient deterministic one. Um, yeah, just a few more comments. Uh, this is a randomized algorithm that has like a zero-sided error. Like this never wrongly gives you a prime. Uh, it's just, you know, sometimes if you run it for a while, it'll come back and say like, well, I don't have any, uh, any answer for you. But it's a kind of randomized algorithm where it never gives wrong answers. It just might take a long time before you get a right answer. OK, any questions? OK, good. So that's all I have to say on the subject of fields with a prime number of elements. So now let's start talking about uh, fields that have a prime power number of elements. And just as a bit of a 
teaser for them, I'll tell you what the field with nine elements is. The field with nine elements, or f sub uh, 3 squared, you can write it as all the numbers that look like a plus b times i, where a and b are integers mod 3, and where i is the square root of negative 1. So it's not super obvious that this makes a field that like, uh, well, you can multiply and add and subtract these numbers using like int mod 3 arithmetic on the, uh, the real and complex part. But it's not obvious that like every number like this has a reciprocal that looks like this. But it's true. And so that's a representation of the field of size 9. But on the other hand, if you try to get the field of size 25 by just changing all the 3s to 5s, it doesn't work. 1 plus 2i times 1 plus 3i. If you do the coefficients mod 5, I think this is 0. And that's bad in a field, right? You shouldn't have two non-zero numbers multiplying to give you 0. 